Hi everyone and welcome to this short video in our series on chemical equilibrium where we get introduced to something called the reaction quotient. And you might be thinking, what the heck is a reaction quotient and why would I need it anyway? Well, let's take a look at a question and see why we might need it. I'm keeping a reaction uh, that we've already seen a few times just to keep things consistent. Um, but the question is slightly different. It says at a different temperature, the value for K for the same reaction is 120. We saw that once already. If the hydrogen concentration is 0.27 and I con the I2 concentration is 0.38 and the HI is 4.21 moles per liter, is the system at equilibrium? And so we might be looking at a system and we can see the molecules, we can see the stuff going on, but we like, um, is it at equilibrium or is it still moving toward equilibrium? And if so, which direction is it going to shift to get to equilibrium? Is it going to shift to the right to make more products or left to make more reactants? That's the really big question. And so if we don't know that, we have to do something called the reaction quotient. So check it out. The reaction quotient, we uh, thankfully use the letter Q for reaction quotient. So nothing confusing there. But what it is, if, and you'll notice a very big similarity between the equilibrium constant expression and the Q expression. It's the same. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to get the position of the equilibrium at this moment by plugging in what we know at this moment. So it can be used to give the position of the equilibrium at any time and can be used to determine whether future change will occur. So what we do is we are just going to plug our numbers in that we have and then compare Q to what we know K to be. So let's do that. Let's go back to our original question. And I'm going to set up my Q expression. Now, again, it's always a good idea to set up your expression that you're going to be filling numbers into so that anyone reading your work will be happy because they'll know right off the bat what you're doing and that it's the correct thing to do, of course. And so you're going to say Q is going to be equal to something. Let's plug our numbers in. So Q equals, okay, HI is 4.21, and we're going to square that. And the H2 is 0.27. And the I2 is 0 0.38. Okay, now if I plug that into my calculator, I get a value of 173. Okay, great. I got, I got a number. Awesome. So what do I do with that number? Well, first what we're going to do is we're going to compare our Q value. This is what it's going on. This is the ratio at this moment to what the equilibrium constant is. And it's actually higher than the equilibrium constant. So you may want to pause the video and write this table down. This is really the summary of how we use reaction quotient. We figure out our quotient and we compare it to K. If we find our current conditions equal K, then we know we're at equilibrium and boom, we're, we're done. We're no, no more work needs to be done. But if Q is less than K, then that means the reaction is still going toward equilibrium and it has to get to a higher ratio. Well, that means taking some of the reactants on the bottom and producing some more products, which would go on the top and we would get a larger uh, number for it. So we, we're gonna go shifting to the right if Q is less than K. In my case, Q was greater than K. And in that case, the ratio is too big. The ratio of the products of the reactants is too big. So it has to drop to get to equilibrium. And that means getting rid of some of the products making that top number smaller and making some more reactants, making the bottom numbers bigger, and we will hopefully get to the equilibrium that way. So this is the summary of how we use it. So I would go back to my original question and say for this reaction, so that my grader or my professor or teacher uh, knows what I'm doing. So Q is now greater than K. And then you want to make a little statement like react excuse me, will shift left. Okay, that's an appropriate way to say we're going to make more reactants. So you can shift left, you can shift right. Totally appropriate. Um, you can say it in a number of ways as well, but the reaction is going to shift left in this case. So that's an example of how we use the reaction quotient. And now we're going to have our pause the video moment for this episode. Take a moment. We have some current conditions for this reaction. Take a moment, find the equal or the reaction quotient and see if you can predict which way the equilibrium will shift.
for this one. And welcome back. If you were able to do that and find out that the reaction is going to shift to the right this time, then congratulations. We have a Q value, uh, Q expression. We plug in our values. I got a value of 0.536, which to me is much smaller than the equilibrium constant, which is 34. And that means Q is less than K. So we're going to have to take some more of our reactants and make products to make the ratio bigger. And that will mean a shift to the right. So if you're ever asked if a system is at equilibrium and you're given some current conditions, just plug them in, see what you get, and make your judgment call on that. We'll end with a quick look at the table one more time. And I hope you find that helpful. And uh, if you ever have any questions that you'd like me to answer or solve, feel free to send them to me in the comments or otherwise. Uh, in the meantime, happy solving and have a great day.